Uh, for the first time, let me the now unveil Xbox. Do you ever think back on the old days? The days of the original Xbox and Xbox 360? I had a whole shelf of Xbox games that were loved and cherished. There were so many iconic titles on the original Xbox. But what happened to games like that? I'm talking about Battlefront 1, Battlefront 2, Republic Commando, where you play as a badass special forces clone trooper with an immersive storyline that takes you through the brutality of the Clone Wars. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, an edgy, iconic title with a rags to riches story that although is outlandish at times, it still manages to remain grounded in realism unlike other games. Saints Row, the original battlefields. I'm talking Bad Company 1, Bad Company 2, where you could demolish massive structures and battle in open landscapes. The Medal of Honor franchise. Crimson Skies, one of the only decent flight games I have ever played in my life. The initial Call of Duty and uh, the original Halo 1 and Halo 2. Oh. oh, shit, that is fresh. Chef's kiss. When I think back to those classic titles, I feel warm inside. It takes me back to a simpler time. A time when I didn't have to care about the problems of the world, my checkings account, inflation, bills, and really the only thing that mattered was if it was gonna be a snow day and what my mom was making for dinner. Mom, bathroom! What, hon? Bathroom, bathroom! Oh, that's a big boy, isn't he? All right, Kenny, drink your elixir of the month. And if I could stay home and play a couple extra rounds of Battlefront or try and beat a level in Indiana Jones, life was good, and it stayed that way for a long time. Eventually, the Xbox 360 came out when I was in eighth grade, and I was able to make some cash doing yard work for about eight bucks an hour until I saved up enough to buy it. It was really the first thing I had ever worked for in life and I still own that timeless gem. Many of my friends I have to this day I gamed with on the Xbox 360. Whether it was defeating countless waves of Nazi zombies, saving planet Earth from the flood, mining deep into locust territory, demolishing buildings with C4, or playing Halo 3 custom games, these are some of my best and most cherished childhood memories. But somewhere around 2015, things started to change. Things started to stale, if you will. Maybe it was the fact I grew up and those iconic memories were just me thinking back to a simpler time with rose-colored glasses. But I don't really think that's it. Although it is true, generally people think back fondly on the past. But just think about how much new and unique content there was back then. You didn't have to worry about whether or not a game would be released in an unplayable state. You didn't have to worry about pay to win. These games, by and large, were just made for dudes and chicks to escape and have fun fun that's the word i'm looking for games used to be fundamentally created for fun why games were fun what made these games fun well let's take a look at one of my personal favorites battlefront 2 there was no ranking up no weapon unlocks no weapon customization sure there were classes to choose from but most of the gameplay was pretty simple but jesus it was fun whether you were getting on a tauntaun and sneaking behind enemy lines or as the empire on hoth going to the enemy base and stealing a snow speeder. I mean, it was so simple, but so well done. The teams weren't all human either. You had bots running around, and it honestly was a great mix of killing dumb bots and running into the occasional player. And honestly, this made you feel like your input in battles actually mattered. And very often, a single player could turn the tide of the entire map. Eventually, DLC would be added to Battlefront 2, but it was free and added value to the game. Players could also also pick maps to play from. If you wanted to play Hoth 24-7, by all means, just set up a server and go to town. Now, that didn't mean people would want to play on your server, but again, fuck it, do it. For the most part, games were not created to be overly complex or had to hit X, Y, and Z target audiences. If it was a Star Wars game, guess what? You probably were going to get the developer's best shot at making a semi-realistic adaptation of what they thought was a Star Wars game. 
Same with a lot of World War II games. I guess a lot of gaming back then was more refined than it is today. I feel like games these days just try and go with whatever's trending or what other games are doing because they know it will make a ton of money. Ultimately, many of these iconic and unique titles betray what makes them unique all in an effort to make money off whatever is trending. An example of this is all the games that released Battle Royale game modes following PUBG's success. Think back to the recently released travesty that is Battlefront 2. The game was supposed to be an easy slam dunk. Old fans like me had been dying to recapture the memories of our childhood and make new ones. The trailer started coming out and hot damn, the game was gorgeous. I immediately threw $60 at EA and marked my calendar. Then it released and mother Fucker. The devs were so greedy that they built the entire gameplay loop around microtransactions. Not even a consistent way to rank up your character based on skill. Only RNG loot crates. That was the only way to progress. I logged in that first time and was instantly curb stomped. So many players having all elite purple cards unlocked within the first day. EA eventually would fix some of this pay to win nonsense, but the game would never fully recover or live up to the prequel's legacy. Gears of War. Gears of War back in the day was so fun. The story was amazing and it put you in the shoes of Marcus Phoenix, battling hordes of locusts trying to save what little was left of humanity. Some humans were good, some bad, and the locust human war was downright brutal. I mean, there are literally areas of the map where there are just piles of dismembered bodies in minecarts. And Dom literally blows his own wife's braids out with a revolver. It's Dominic. Marcus. I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, man. She. No. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I love you so much. Uh. <laughs> The shit is hardcore. Now let's contrast that with Gears of War 5. Who even knows what is going on with this story? You got robots, you got zombie locusts. So much is going on, it's actually boring and not even worth following the storyline. I just wasn't able to invest emotionally with any of the characters. There's absolutely no sense of urgency here. Same thing with the new Halo franchise. You had Halo 1, 2, and 3, and it was a very easy to follow story that played could become emotionally invested in. Basically, you had a bunch of fucknut religious wacko aliens who were trying to kill humanity, accidentally releases the flood, and meanwhile, humanity is just hanging on for fucking dear life. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Right? And Halo 4 happened. They rewrote the backstory to make Precursor Dust turn into Flood and a bunch of shit that just very loosely makes sense. And slowly but surely, Halo started to become less like Halo and a lot more like Call of Duty, Titanfall, or really whatever was trending that year. I've heard the new one is good, but at this point, I will believe it when I see it. I guess my point is old games were believable. They didn't have to go try hard and make even crazier, less believable storylines to top the last game. 
game. Many of these new games just go way too try hard, making themselves stand out so far apart from what they were. It's a disservice to the memories of these titles, and it's lazy on behalf of studios. If you want to make an entirely different game, make a new game. Don't just call it a sequel when it has nothing to do with the original. I understand that it's easy to open up a world in an engine you have already made. Same art design and just write more story, kick it out the door. Built-in fan base, etc. But again, this is a lazy cash grab. And on a final note, think about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Remember, no Russian. That mission alone was so controversial, but they weren't afraid to put it in the game. Sure, maybe they were a little afraid, but it didn't stop them. And I don't think you see balls like that anymore because the studios are afraid it will piss people off. Pay to win. But let's go back to pay to win for a second. There are so many examples of games that expect the player base to fork up piles of cash just to have some enjoyment. One quarter portion. Just to list a few. Red Dead Online. Here, buy all these gold bars. Grand Theft Auto V. Online. Here, buy all these short cards. EVE Online. Here, buy all this Plex. Fallout 76. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is all of this just works. Almost it's not, I'm not kidding. And it, again, it, it just works. Yep, yep, go check out the Atom Store. FIFA. I don't know, car packs or whatever you fucking FIFA players play. Clash of Clans. Make sure you get some gems. Yeah, fuck you, EA. And the list goes on and on. And even if a game is not pay to win these days, you best believe that once it is released, there are gonna be all kinds of DLC or special packs the player is expected to fork out extra money for. It just makes me angry. And now we have reached the point in this video where we address the elephant in the room and what truly ruined video games. Greed. I hate to say it, but I don't see this getting any better. Why don't I see this getting any better? Simple, the shit works. The gaming industry is vast and they are raking in record profits on this pseudo gambling loot box business model. If it works and it's not illegal, why the fuck would they make any effort to change it? The answer is, they won't. They won't until players grow tired of it and stop participating in it all together. Take Call of Duty Modern Warfare, for example. Every week or so, they drop a new purchasable weapon skin. Say it takes devs 30 hours to design and code it. As long as enough people buy it to pay for those developers' time, it was worth it. I mean, it really is a no-brainer for them. Lazy cash grabs. Another major issue with gaming these days is the lazy cash grabs. Like, studios aren't even trying to hide it at this point. Every two years, they just reskin a previous game and toss it out the door. Look at Halo franchise. Halo 3 didn't even get a reskin in the Master Chief collection. It was just advertised as higher FPS. Like, wow, that's fucking sick, dude. No shit. It's a new, they're new consoles with upgraded hardware. Yeah, they're gonna have higher FP fucking, F fuck you, fuck you. And even then, they released the Master Master Chief Collection in an incomplete and buggy state. It took over three years to make it finally playable. And by that point, it's like, why even bother playing it? Everyone move the fuck on. Think about all the remakes that we have been seeing. And many of these reskins are listed for the total price of a new title, 60 bucks. And it's bullshit because they aren't releasing new and unique games. They aren't even tweaking the old game. They are releasing old nostalgic titles that have dedicated fan bases of people who will buy them. If Battlefront 2 was released on the new Unreal Engine with all the old game mechanics, you bet I would buy it. So yes, I am part of the problem. But at the end of the day, I'm tired of buying these new titles that have just been riddled with game-breaking bugs and greedy dev gaming loops. Now, these problems are all over the AAA game market, but let's take a look at the indie game market. I mean, you can find some unique and good games there, right? Well, yeah, kinda. Indie cash grabs. 
Indie games, as always, are hit and miss. When PUBG came out, it was so fresh in terms of, wow, this is something really new. It does not pay to win. It's super broke, but fuck. This is fun. Over time though, PUBG did turn into a shit fest with rampant hacking, loot boxes, battle pass, toxic streamers, game breaking updates, latency, and greedy devs who release incomplete ports on the Xbox and PS4. Now it's going free to play and go figure, but I digress. Anyway, yeah, some of the best experiences in games that I've had in my 20s were provided by smaller studios. And just to list a few, Factor simple game build massive factories all so you can create a ship to get off the planet but there are aliens trying to fight you the whole time really fun rim world make a colony and survive but so many crazy little details that really engulf the player in immersion valheim survival crafting kenshi holy shit this game was fun and so fucking brutal like you can literally be captured and made into a slave minecraft it was actually indie back in the day, and now it's massive, and you have to buy mods on consoles, which in my opinion is fundamentally morally bankrupt. Like on PC, mods are all free, and all these devs have to do is port them onto console and make a profit. They don't have to think of new ideas. It's already made for them, and it really is bullshit. But through all of the games I listed there is one thing that has always been a cancerous tumor on the indie game market. And the fact that all these games are released way too early. The typical thing to do is to sell these games in a pre-alpha with a disclaimer, it's not the end product. Then patch the game over the next five years Till they can release the full version. Really, this has just gotten out of control and games will build hype, be released, broken, and then in some cases, just completely abandoned by dev teams or finally released playable years down the road and everyone has lost interest. DayZ did this. And although it's a playable game now, it's just super annoying to buy a game for $40 and find it won't even be enjoyable for a couple years. Personally, I stay away from most beta slash alpha games but even then you still get games that release as the full version but are broke as fuck take a look at the new battlefield this game is a dumpster fire which leads nicely into my final point wokeness in video games look i am all for inclusion fairness etc right most people are but don't shove it down my throat in a video game. And it all depends on the goal of the video game. For instance, nowadays, most all World War II games release with female main characters, which I get it. If you're a female playing the game, you probably want to play as a female to immerse yourself and identify with the character more. I have no problem whatsoever with that. However, I do draw the line when a game advertises historical accuracy, but turns around and bends history to promote it. Like, you can't have your cake and eat it too. The new Battlefield has a non-binary main character, which, whatever, do you. But we all know why they did this. They released this title with a non-binary character, not because they care about the LGBTQ community. They did it because no matter what they released, no matter how broken their game was, no matter how much it was dogged on for being trash, they will always have a group who identify with them politically and will stand in front of their dumpster of a game and call it a progressive gem. All the while, they can say people hate their game because they are racist, misogynistic, etc. But the truth is, EA released a broken and garbage title, and no amount of wokeness will make their game any more fun. I mean, for God's sake. They disabled career stats, in-game chat, and leaderboards, all because they want every player to feel like a winner. They don't want any shit talking in their lobbies. I don't know about you guys, but being able to play and perform better than others is why I play online games. Because the competition makes it fun. And who doesn't love some good old fashioned shit talking? In closing, they are doing this because they know it will have a dedicated group of people that will defend their product just like the new Star Wars movies. The movies are hot fucking garbage. But people will literally get into fierce arguments, not because they were ever Star Wars fans to begin with, 
but because they agree with the misguided woke attempts directors will make to virtue signal at the audience. And again, I really don't have a problem at all with people being included or diversity of characters. I have a problem with being virtue signaled to. Don't throw it in my face. There are so many empowered female characters or LGBTQ people that I'm like, damn, they are badass like Yennefer in The Witcher or Jack Twist in Brokeback Mountain. What made these characters unique or empowered slash badass wasn't their sexual preference or their gender. It was how they handled adversity. And good character writing can make any character a good one. The new Wonder Woman is a great example of this. Wonder Woman was a badass character, potentially the most powerful character in the movie. However, she is still vulnerable. She's still human, which is okay because everyone is well most everyone it just seems like corporations are using wokeness as a cop out for directors and writers to make subpar characters and plot if you disagree i don't know this is just what i see so i don't really care concluding thoughts in closing video games these days are trash because of greed that's what it all really comes back to things are sacrificed that would be fun for players because it would not make extra money and can't be monetized Items are added because they do really good for advertising, but in reality, add nothing to the fun of the game. Deadlines are stretched way too fucking thin because studios are squeezing every fucking dime possible out of their product. And gaming is less about uniqueness and more about pre-graphics and making products that will, without a doubt, turn millions in revenue. The old games were made to have fun. Sure, they were also made to make money, but I feel they cared more about pleasing players and bolstering their reputation and less about shareholders. Game designers made games that they felt would be fun to play themselves. It's terrible that in today's world, we have all this technology, VR, high-end graphics, new game engines, cross compatibility, better bandwidth, and yet gaming seems shallower than it has ever been. And every time I log into the new Call of Duty or Battlefield, I feel like the devs are sitting there like, oh, just give us five more dollars. You'll have more fun, <laughs> please. You'll have more fun. Ultimately, although I don't think the problem will improve with the current climate of gaming, again, because studios do it because it makes so much money, but there is still a certain degree of hope. There is a significant market share of consumers that are tired of the triple A beautiful shallow games. And there are always devs striving to make games like this that are just fun and will be played by people to just have fun. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video slash rant. Let me know in the comments your thoughts and for now, take it easy.